Welcome back, everybody. This is the Monad mini-series, and we are gradually moving closer and closer to understanding monads. Now, so far, we have introduced functors and introduced pointed functors, which allowed us to make instances of our functor. So we know the what, what is a functor, and we kind of know how, uh, but now it's time to cover the why. Why would we actually use a functor? And so we're going to figure out that why by introducing the maybe functor. So uh, first I'm going to start this video by making a few code changes. And the first will be to just remove the array because we don't need that. That's just extra clutter. Um, I've added some helper functions. You can either copy these down or you can grab the code for this video in a gist, which will be linked in the description box below. Now we're going to start by refactoring some of the existing logic without changing any of it. So without changing the logic, I should say. The syntax will look a bit different, but the actual logic will stay the same. And that's going to make it easier for us to actually implement a maybe functor in the way that makes some sense. So we're going to start by changing the implementation of map. We're going to manually curry it. Uh, so we'll do that by just removing that and we'll just put a lambda inside here. And this will just allow us to pass in first the function, which is the f argument here, uh, and then the context. So those will be passed in separately to map. And if you don't understand currying or you're not familiar with it, I have videos about currying, so check those out. I'll link to those in the description below. Uh, and we will be using compose. Uh, if you're not familiar again with composition, check out my videos on composition. They will also be linked in the description. So what we can do with compose and a curried version of map is we can create an app uh, argument or variable. That's what I'm going to call it anyway. Uh, and it will just be a composition of everything in our application. So we'll start by just making a transform uh, function. And the transform function oops, uh, is just going to be a composition of map ag1 and map ag1, which means that we are just whatever transform receives it is going to map ag1 over it. So it's going to be receiving a functor. And it's going to app map ag1 over the value in that functor. And then it'll do that same thing again. And uh, that's all it needs to do at this point. We can remove this. Uh, actually, we'll keep result for now. And result will just be app with whatever input we pass in. So now let's create our input. Start with a functor. OK, so let's make sure this all works. There we go. Perfect. So we still are doing the exact same thing. We have our functor. We are simply going to map over it twice with ag1 each time, which is going to take us from a functor with a value of 41 to a functor of a value of 43. And this works just fine as long as we pass in a reasonable value for input. Now, I'm going to do a slight change here. I'm going to move our functor, my functor dot of inside of our app. And we will oops, remove that. And so now we can pass in our input as 41. Again, this doesn't change anything. All I've done is move the creation or the move the value from being put inside the functor at the input stage to being the first stage in our application composition. So still does the same thing. If you don't understand these changes, check out the composition and the currying video. If you understand those changes, you are ready to move forward with the maybe functor. So Everything works right now as long as we pass in a proper value. But, oops, but if I were to just pass in undefined as our input, 
Then when I run it, I get nan. Nan is a pointless value as far as functional programming is concerned because it's a type of number. Like if you do a type of on it, it will say number. But nan stands for not a number because it's not an actual number value. It's just a member of the nums numbers type class if you want to look at it that way. So it's not it's not a great value. What we want is some way of preventing an undefined value from being passed into our transformation because our transformation is expecting a number, right? So transform simply takes a number and returns us a number. But if we give it undefined, it gives us back a number, but it's not a number, it's nan. It doesn't make any sense. So we need to promise transform that we will always give it a number. And we can do that by using a maybe. And so if we replace my functor with maybe, we can actually create what's called a maybe number. So maybe number is basically going to say, I'm going to take in a value. If it's a number, I'll run it through all of the following functions. If it's not a, if it's not a value, if it's undefined or null, then it will just bypass these values or these transformations so that it doesn't give us a crappy value. Now we just have to go ahead and implement it. So let's hop up to our my functor. I'm going to remove this for now because we don't really need it. Uh, and this will be our maybe. Let's replace this with maybe for now. It's not going to stay that way. And maybe. Now I'm going to immediately make a copy of this and put it down here. So the, the secret sauce of making a maybe out of our existing functor is to implement a different version of map. So if we look down at the one of the functions that I added, it's a function called is nothing. And so is nothing simply takes a value and checks if it's equal to null or is equal to undefined. And if it's equal to either of those, so if either of those clauses are true or expressions are true, then it will return true. So we can do a check in our, ma in our map function to check if the this.value is nothing. So we'll do is nothing, this.value. And if it is, we need to return some sort of default value. So we'll, f we'll do that in a second. Otherwise, we need to pass that value into the function that map received, which is the same as before and then put it in a context. Now, we actually don't want to put it in a maybe context. Now, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Because I said we need to put it in the same context. Now, what really matters is the behavior of that context. So even if we call it something else, we don't want to use maybe because maybe is a type constructor. That's how we could create that maybe number that I mentioned below. So we need to give it a value that sig or a context that signals that this is a good value. This this was not a nothing value. And the general uh, consensus on what to call that is a just. Whoa, is a just value. So it will take this dot value, pass it into whatever function is used to transform that value, and it will return what's called a just. And now the reason I made a copy of maybe immediately is because my functor, that ver functor that we've been using in the last two videos, is a basic implementation of just. So if I change this to just, and this to just, and this to just, just simply takes uh, whatever function, or in its map, it just takes whatever function and, apl and applies it to it, the current value that the just holds, and then returns it in a new just. It doesn't make any evaluation of the quality of that value. It simply returns it transformed in adjust. And the uh, of method for just simply takes any value and just puts it in a just context, which is essentially like the minimum, the minimal functor that you could think of, the minimal context. And so now we need to do something with our default value, because this is going to, no matter what, always 
run the value through the function. So now we need the opposite of that. If we're always going to run it through the function, if it's a just, we want to never run it through if it's the other thing. And that is generally just called nothing. So we need nothing.of and actually just pass in undefined because it's, it's not going to have a this.value. So let's uh, start by copying this guy. Paste that down there. All right. And it's not going to have a this.value, like I just said. So we can remove that, remove that, and simply return. Whoop. Return object.assign with nothing. Clean that up a bit. Remove this. And replace our just with a nothing. And now call this. And I am just hitting all kinds of wrong keys right now. Uh, and so our nothing has a map method as well. But all it does is just return a new empty nothing. And so no matter what, as soon as, we've be as, soon as the value has become nothing, it will always be nothing. And as soon as it becomes adjust, it will always be adjust. And that's kind of, it's kind of implied by the definitions that we have above. Right, where if we're going to always return it in the same context, once it's adjust, it's adjust, and once it's nothing, it's a nothing. And the maybe is that that guard that stands in between, excuse me, our transformations, our pure code. Oh, I should actually fix this because that looks gross. There we go. Our maybe is that that guard that stands in between our existing pure code and then the rest of the world. And it says whether or not the value is valid and should be passed through as a just or as a nothing. Um, expected indentation is wrong. You like that now? Round three, there we go. All right. So now, if we've implemented this correctly, then our undefined input should no longer be a problem. There we go. So now we get back what looks like just a minimum functor. Like it has the exact same methods, but has no value property. And that's because this is our nothing. But that's not very clean to look at. It looks kind of confusing. And when you think about it, you don't, if you were to console log an array, you don't see an object with a bunch of methods on it. You see what looks like an array. So if you understand this, congratulations, this is what the maybe functor is for. We're putting it in between the outside world, which in this case is our input. So we could imagine this to be, say, an API call that could return a number or it could return undefined. So it essentially, it has a value of maybe number. So as long as we wrap that in a maybe, then our the rest of our code is protected. Because if it's undefined, maybe says, all right, don't run it through any of these transformations. But if it is valid, in the case of it returns a value that isn't undefined or null, then it will be passed through our transformation. And so let's just go back up here. Just I'll show you that it does work with real numbers. And there we go. We get 42. But what really matters now is making, well, I shouldn't say what matters. It would be helpful if we could see a pr appropriate expression of these values. So if you understand everything at this point, you don't really care about what it looks like in the console, that's totally fine. You can call this video here and uh, move on to the next video, which will actually introduce, finally, uh, monads. But I am going to explain why those are valuable at the end of this video. So it may be useful to stick around anyway. But we're going to add a log method to our functors. And so what I have here is a function called log. It simply takes a context and checks if that context has a log method. If it does, it executes that method. Otherwise, it calls console log and passes in the context. If you don't understand that, that's totally fine. I think it'll make some sense after you see it implemented. So I'm just going to add a log method to nothing. And all that we need to log out to the console if we have nothing is Nothing. Easy peasy. And now if we have our just value, just is a bit more interesting. We add log. It's going to be a function. And it's going to console log out just. 
and then whatever the value is of this dot value. Close that up. So now we can go down to our app. We can add in log. And now we can remove the assignment of the app output to result because log doesn't actually return anything. If you look at line 31, log does not return anything. It just outputs to the console. So we have no reason to actually assign that output value to anything because it will just be undefined. But we have our log function here, which will actually show our output. So now we have a nice clear delineation of our code. We have our maybe, which is going to protect our pure transformations in the transform variable. And then we have our output. So you can kind of think of it as output, transformation, and then handling our input in a safe way to protect the purity of our transformation. And now if I run this, we get just 42. And if I were to, oops, accidentally delete extra code. <laughs> if I were to run this now, we get nothing because we passed in nothing, so we get nothing back. It's only fair, right? That's the way life works. And now if you're astute, you might be thinking, this works really well. I totally see how this solves our problem of dealing with undefined. And I could even see how I could put perhaps a more involved uh, type check to make sure that it's explicitly a number as opposed to just undefined, for example. Because JavaScript is very dynamic, those sorts of type assignments can be uh, problematic. But what happens if we wanted to, say, have another chunk of our app, we'll just call it app2, and uh, it was going to start also with a maybe. So maybe we were going to, let me just finish this here, we were going to make a initial request to the API, do a transformation, and then we were going to have another output which was going to interact with the outside world. So maybe we sent this off to another API and we were going to get back a new value. Well, we would probably want to protect our next set of transformations with another maybe. But now we have a maybe within a maybe. Well, uh, more appropriately, we have a just value, which is going to be returned from the transform into app2. But app2 is expecting a, a maybe, or expecting a number, not a just number. So this is going to cause a problem for us. So if I run this, now things don't work. We need some way of flattening out our just number and sticking it into a new maybe. And we do that with monads. So up to this point, we have taken a container and added a map method in order to make it a functor. We've taken that functor and added an of method in order to make it a pointed functor. So as you might expect, we're going to add some more behavior to our container via methods. And we're going to take our pointed functors and make them into monads. And that'll be in the next video, so stay tuned for that. I find this stuff super interesting, so hopefully you're enjoying it as well. Let me know if my voice sounded any better in this video. Uh, I'm trying out a headset because I noticed that the background noise from the fan on my laptop was quite bad in the last few videos. I'd like your feedback on that. Ask any questions down below if you have them. Oh, this is going to bother me. Transform. Uh, ask any questions down below if you have them, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.